education and their partner Tech Valley. They are the lead sponsors for SOT 2023. Our titanium sponsor is UVL. Other key sponsors include My Backpack, MK Books, Allied Bank Limited, Habib Bank Limited, Vatin, Franklin Covey, and Leader in Me. We also thank our SOT supporters, including Paramount Books and Nestle Pure Life, who have contributed to this year's event. I'm Aisha Ali, and I am the head of school, Pekin House Gulshan Campus, Rawalpindi. Please take a moment to note these important housekeeping points. Please ensure your cell phones are on silent. Entry and exit points are the same. Always stay calm and follow our directions. Please use the SOT app to scan the QR code for question and answer session and also for the feedback. Share your thoughts on social media using the hashtags, hashtags guardian of the future and hashtag SOT 2023. If you need assistance, our ushers are here to help. For questions, please either use the flashcards provided by the ushers or the mobile app. This is a panel discussion and it will last for 45 minutes, followed by 15 minutes of question and answer session. Our third session for the day is a panel discussion by the title, Reviving Destination, the Renaissance of Hospitality and Tourism. Moderator for the session is Ms. Tazeen Hussain. Ms. Tazeen is an associate professor in the Department of Communication Design at, it, at Indus Valley School of Art and Architecture. She has served as head of department in the Department of Communication Design and Foundation Program at IVS and as visiting faculty in the Departments of Visual Studies at Karachi University. She holds a bachelor's degree in Communication Design from Indus Valley School of Art and Architecture and a master's in New Media and Society from the University of Assesta, UK. As a researcher, Ms. Hussain has presented her work at national and international conferences and published internationally as well. She has been volunteering her services for projects following, fall, falling in the realm of creative and social entrepreneurship, sustainable development, climate change, and merging education and design practice. She also works in media as a member of ACT Pakistan while her other areas of contribution are theater, journalism, and activism. Over to you, Ms. Tazim. Uh, it's my distinct honor to uh, pleasure and welcome, uh, it's my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you all. Today's panel discussion promised, promises to be an enlightening discussion on tourism and hospitality. And uh, I would like to proceed with introducing our distinguished panelists. Mr. Kamran Lashari has been working as a Director General Wall City Lahore Authority since the past 10 years, where he has completed a number of projects to revive the old city of Lahore architecturally and culturally. Lashari joined the civil services of Pakistan in 1979 and has served Sindh, Lahore and Islamabad, including as Chief Commissioner, Islamabad and also Chairman, Capital Development Authority. His most notable contributions in service have centered on art, culture and heritage preservations. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Charles Bick Barker has lived in many parts of the world, managing and developing hotels and tourism projects. He has a consultancy business, advising both the public and private sector on sustainable hospitality and tourism development. 
Based in Islamabad, he operates an exclusive travel company, Bespoke Touring, through which he highlights and promotes the wonders of Pakistan as a must-visit tourist destination. A published author of four novels and an occasional blogger of political satire, he also talks on TV and radio. Welcome. Asma Chishti moved to Pakistan in 2015 from Hong Kong and launched, uh, and launched acclaimed Destinations Pakistan, the country's premier travel and lifestyle media platform. Destination has millions of engaged users across multiple platforms, including a very popular booking tourism app, Destinations TV, with more than 10 million viewers and a network of over 70 exhibition spaces across the country. Chishti is an executive board member of Debu Pakistan and Afkare Taza Thinkfest. Welcome. <laughs> Nadeem Jafar is an experienced professional in the hospitality and tourism industry. He is currently general manager at Rumi Signature Hotels Pakistan, uh, Islamabad and is also the CEO of JB Hotels and Resorts in Gilgit Baltistan. Jafar's experience spans across several industries, including luxury hotels, consumer products, and travel and tour management. He holds an MBA degree from Preston University and various certifications from Cornell University, IBA, and LUMS in emerging economies and markets in Asia, business innovation and design, and building high-performance culture for executive leadership. Welcome, sir. I will now read a short abstract of our session today. The travel, tourism, and hospitality industries are at a critical juncture as they recover from the impact of the pandemic and its related closures. As international excursions become less frequent, um, having to do with affordability, there has been a burgeoning interest in the exploring local attractions generating an interest in the preservation of heritage sites and development of domestic destinations. This session gathers a group of experts who bring insights from the worlds of luxury hotel, travel writing, sustainable tourism, and broader industry experience. Digital transformation of the hospitality industry and the new paradigm of luxury travel offer innovative directions that can usher in a renaissance for hospitality and tourism, something that is only truly possible as we acknowledge the challenges of embracing sustainability in a post-pandemic world and the role of media in reshaping tourist destinations. This session, I hope, will build our understanding of the multifaceted dimensions of this fascinating industry's future. So, um, quite a wide task at hand. Hmm. So I would like to begin the panel by throwing in the opening question. How have the dynamics of luxury travel or travel generally evolved, especially in context of recent global challenges? And what trends can we anticipate for the, to the, uh, for the future? And I would like Mr. Um, I would like, uh, Mr. Lashari to start with this. I thought Mr. Deem was more appropriate for that, but uh, as you wish. Uh, as I would look at uh, this uh, aspect, I think uh, one one turning point has been the COVID, where the trend has changed since then. And uh, starting from a complete shutdown of uh, travel and uh, hospitality sector, it has come up um, very active and the scope and uh, the hope has, uh, I think, brightened up as far as Pakistan is concerned. Mm, because um, going abroad is now more expensive, more cumbersome and uh, a trend picked up when people couldn't go abroad or were scared to go abroad, then, then coming to and exploring their own areas. And uh, some better network also, improved network to but particularly Gilgit Baltistan. I think that has opened new vistas. Uh, till till few decades ago, it was only the Galiyat 
which were much visited, but now this area, and now we also have flights come, going, uh, operating from uh, Sakardu to recently now even Dubai has added, that's a, a big step, and um, from Lahore to Gilgit and uh, Sakardu on daily basis. So um, I think that has uh, brought a lot of uh, scope or uh, activity. Now, whether they are ready for that, and is Pakistan and Gilgit Baltistan ready for that, and provide a wholesome total experience to the people, I, I believe in this. It's not the quantity of people to measure good tourism, it's the quality of tourism which is more important. And for that, uh, there's a triangular relationship between uh, the tourists, who are the main focus of, or should be, the focal point of our interest, how to please the tourists. But there are two other uh, factors also, I call it triangular. One is the place, the region, and the other is the local population. So all three have to blend together and for a sustainable uh, and a healthy um, tourism, they all have to put their act together. Uh, because if there are a lot of tourists and the region is spoiled, the place is uh, violated, it's not of much, uh, let's say, delight. And the other, if, if the local population is adversely impacted or not cooperating that way or not measuring up, not trained for that, then also that will not be very good for the healthy tourism. So all these factors have to go together and um, sometimes one is the active side, the other is not. Once again, the local population, the local region, uh, the respect for the nature and region, and the third is the tourists themselves. So I will leave it to that. What Lashari Saab has said, I would like to add on to it that um, since since COVID, the traveler, they have evolved as well. Uh, their requirements, their needs, their preferences for per se. Per se. They might want to be nearer to the nature. Uh, they are not our typical uh, traveler, corporate traveler as we used to call them a uh, long time ago. Uh, they're, they're more into glamping, they're more into uh, tenting out somewhere. Uh, Ferry Meadows has become a, a tourist uh, destination now, which, uh, which was difficult to actually read about or access uh, any given day. So yes, um, uh, like Lashari Saab said, COVID actually gave us the springboard effect, impact, that uh, perhaps we needed for the domestic tourism, uh, evolving both the facilitators and the travelers. Thank you. Thank you. Asma, I would like you to speak a little bit about this as well. Um, well, uh, for me, obviously, I'd like to uh, talk about it from uh, the point of view of media, since, um, as Lashari Saab said, and uh, Nadeem Saab has also said, that it's basically we've seen this exponential sort of uh, growth and change in direction since COVID mainly. Uh, so with destinations, we entered um, this arena of uh, talking about tourism and, dest and um, culture and all forms of, um, all forms of tourism um, for Pakistan uh, about 10 years ago when I actually moved back to Pakistan. And this was, um, I'd never lived in Pakistan. And uh, frankly, even my kids, whenever they would come back on a holiday to Pakistan, the first thing you would hear was um, th their, their friends would say, don't get shot, buddy, you know? So um, I think the, the main, uh, what we all felt was, I mean, what I felt was that one of the main things that I, I felt was that the perception of Pakistan needed to change. Uh, because frankly, coming here, you realize that uh, there was so much to showcase. So what the initial focus for destinations, the first maybe six, seven years up, leading up to COVID was 100% showcasing 
the beauty of Pakistan, the heritage of Pakistan, and, and expanding the um, knowledge base of uh, these, these, these destinations and so on, and, um, and the experiences and, and uh, but once we saw that, uh, once we saw that the, uh, we were confronted with this exponential growth and we saw that uh, uh, the base had completely changed and the impact had completely changed, uh, we also realized that uh, our focus needed to change from uh, simply being um, uh, a provider of um, knowledge and, and uh, information to um, generally um, providing, uh, to becoming a platform of, uh, uh, of higher impact and uh, transformation. And um, so that's where we decided that we needed to work more proactively with the communities that were involved, with the local governments, with um, changing our message so that it becomes uh, more educational and uh, talking about the uh, UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals more, working more on what we call soft destinations and so on. And that's where um, our app, which, uh, so in-house we had de helped our, my IT department had helped to develop the, the Devu app, uh, which has more than one and a half, uh, like almost one and a half million users a month. So we have the technical ability, so we decided to develop our tourism app. So this tourism app, um, which is now, uh, the, the basic tourism app is now ready for, for launching, uh, is um, basic, the, the basic premise of that app is education. So it's really there to um, help uh, the youth, which is the main sort of, uh, uh, catalyst of this tourism and the, and the future sort of uh, uh, backbone of tourism for Pakistan, it's, it's really there to help them make the right decisions moving forward to make sure that uh, they are aware of um, uh, how to travel with responsibility and with, um, with uh, uh, some form of accountability also. And we have different methods that we've, we're incorporating within the app to uh, make it fun for them to, to do so. So uh, this, this particular thought about the changing, uh, you spoke about your own uh, experience as a mother, and I've also experienced this, I also have children. And so this youth, that wants to experience Pakistan, they want to explore those undiscovered destinations. They, they like adventure, they like autonomy in choosing their own journey. They don't necessarily want to go the route of a pre-planned visit, but it is those little adventures or those little things that happen all of a sudden, that is what excites them. So I think this, uh, this trend is what we are seeing in the upcoming generation and perhaps your app alongside the educational and information provision also enables the user to create their own um, uh, tourist journey, perhaps. No, that's right. So uh, what we are offering is basically, an, it's basically, uh, it's the ability for a traveler, whatever the age and whatever the income bracket, is to keep the spontaneity and, and the adventure to, and the excitement of travel within Pakistan, uh, but with uh, the ability to, um, to understand uh, the country and understand the possibilities that it offers. So, um, for example, uh, when you say, the, uh, let's go up north, you know? So how many of you will know what the north is? A lot of people will, will this is great excitement, okay, let's go up north. Children uh, up north chalte hain. But people, a lot of people don't, don't frankly, I mean, for me also, a lot, uh, I mean, before I really delved into it, uh, I just thought, okay, north is like going up in the mountains, you know? 
but you, a lot of people don't know that actually once you're in Chitral, you can't go meet a friend who has maybe a, um, a house up in Skardu or something. You know, there, there's, you can't. I mean, you, you have to come back to Islamabad or now there's some routes that are opening up or so on, but you, but you always have to descend back because you can't climb up those, you know, there, there's multiple uh, mountain ranges and so on. So the idea is to basically, like, help sort of map out all of Pakistan, map out all the, these heritage sites, right. uh, sh you know, like uh, explain, and then, yes, so, so help them make choices vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the provinces, help them explain maybe, maybe there's this, uh, this kids who just want to know about uh, trekking. So uh, if they want to explore trekking, then, you know, exp where, where all can you go trekking? What type of abilities do you have? Like, like there are everywhere else in the world. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's all, all these apps that people can download and go and explore and so on. So this is, this is the, the point that we had. Absolutely. And so when you have information available for all these undiscovered destinations, uh, alongside that, and you spoke about that, is the responsibility, and Lashari, uh, Lashari Sahib spoke about that, the responsibility towards the community and towards the place itself in terms of uh, practices that do not damage that area. So... Um, what can the tourism and hospitality industry do to ensure that growth does not come at the expense of the environment? I would like you to speak about that, Charles. Um, I, I'd like to just add a point to the education discussion yes. first, because the education of this industry and about Pakistan is not just for the youth. Um, it's for investors. And it's for the, the people who may be investing from overseas. Overseas Pakistan is bringing funds in to invest, or people living here who want to make their luxury hotel. <laughs> and, um, you know, if I had a, a $100 for every building that was called a luxury hotel that I've come across in the last few years, I'd be a very wealthy person. <laughs> um, investors need to understand the dynamics not only of the hotel business, but of the whole business of tourism and its development processes. At the moment, we have a fountain effect of growth. Yes, huge growth, um, but it's uncoordinated, and frankly, it's a mess. And um, this is a great shame because it's going to ruin um, the industry. You know, tourism can be a blessing. It can bring wealth, jobs, um, growth to communities, it can be fantastic, but it can also be a curse if it's done wrong. And I'm afraid we're not doing it very well. And there are countless examples. You go to Naran in the north, you go to Karimabad, uh, look at Murray, unmanaged, uncontrolled, uncoordinated. And we need to track back to a federal tourism strategy, um, which in turn can act as an umbrella for regional uh, strategic programs. And there needs to be a, um, a legislative process to develop tourism which is enforced and followed up. So it's no good as having the rules. But you've got to Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and Charles, the reason it has to be on a federal level and the reason it has to, um, you know, it really needs to be done is because this idea that, oh, curtail the numbers, don't let uh, these people go up. I mean, who are these people? These are people of Pakistan. These are, why should you not allow um, uh, someone who's worked hard, who fills up his, his, uh, his small car with his family to go up north? I mean, why should you curtail that? I mean, it's his right to go up to Murray. It's his right to, he's worked hard all, uh, like, all year round. If he wants to go up north, uh, if he wants to take his children up for a break, why shouldn't he be allowed to go? I mean, you know, so I don't believe in this thing that, oh, uh, you know, don't allow, uh, you know, uh, stop, uh, don't let people go up north. No, you don't have the right rules. That's not his, it's not like uh, the hardworking, uh, you know, uh, family man's uh, fault. It's your regulations are not right. That's the fault. You're, you're, you have not set up the right systems. I mean, if you, if you talk to Lashari Saab, you should see the way they manage the fort yes. and the wall city during Eid and all. It is an open house. It is, mashallah, it is, honestly speaking, it is, 
it's a festival for everyone. Everyone is invited. It is like, uh, it's not, no, 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 no. Please, uh, you know, why should we open, close the doors, close the doors, we don't want, no, they make sure that they manage it because it's, it, it's. It, I mean, you're right, everybody should have the right to be able to visit places. However, take Murray again as an example, a year or so ago in the winter, uncontrolled visitors absolutely, got caught in a it, snowstorm yes, but with resultant death. Absolutely, and, but. And so it's managing tourism. It's not saying you can't come. But but it's managing I, the process. I completely agree with you that those that that is the issue that and, uh, and perhaps in that task we need to involve the communities as well, right? So a little bit perhaps about how the community can help us control issues such as well I think again I'm gonna refer to uh Kamran Saab. he's he's been doing that for years, for decades. Kamran Saab. Well, um, I have been working with communities and uh, I think in the most densely populated areas of the world and yet with low income, low civic sense, um, like the wall city itself. And my, one of my earlier projects, which has remained very dear to me, was Gawal Mandi Food Street. I don't know, here people are younger to understand this was about 15, 20 years ago, but it was an icon of uh, tourism in Lahore to a place which was a no-go area. Uh, people would shun and shy away from going to Gowal Mandi. This is another family ke jana nahi. But uh, we involved the community and developed a project um, pedestrianizing the place in the evenings and bringing tables and chairs out in the open. And then it was everybody sitting together. family President General Musharraf, core commander. Rosanna Yehisintha, diplomats. So, so merging of the people together, how to, um, but you have to honor the local population because the, the place where it is more dense, where it is more populated, all the more it's very, very challenging. A, a wall city may, where, where we are doing um, the, these projects of free, the project is conceived in such a way, while the main theme is to, to preserve the monuments and the history of the place, but the, the focus of the project is on the people, the local residents. Mm -hmm that you first have to improve their quality of life. We have brought down the wires and khambas in that area, which hasn't happened on the MM Alam Road, has happened in the, inside the wall city in the gali and mohallas um, at the project areas. New infrastructure. Most of our work is, is under the ground, uh, just because it helps the people, their way of life, um, living conditions, I would say. And it doesn't bring any direct, uh, you know, recognition to us. But still, unless you make the people of the area feel the beneficiaries, feel that they are uh, important, feel that they, um, you know, they, then only ownership will come in. And that's make it sustainable. The people like us, the government servants keep changing from one position to another, but the people stay there. The, the people are the ones who own that region for centuries. People may come or go back, but we have to train them, we have to sensitize them, we have to focus upon their capacity and capability to take tourism in a positive way and to keep their places uh, clean and uh, good. Thank you so much. Um, हमने बात की अभी तक अपने नॉर्थ की नॉर्थन एरियाज उनकी ब्यूटी दूसरा जो एक बहुत बड़ा हेरिटेज पाकिस्तान के पास है वो कल्चरल और हिस्टोरिकल साइट्स का है तो हाउ डू वी अट्रैक्ट ग्लोबल ग्लोबल ऑडियंस वाइल इंश्योरिंग द प्रेजर्वेशन ऑफ दिस साइट्स नशानी साहब यू सी Pakistan's tourism, we all know when it is in terms of global tourism, is at a low ebb. Mm -hmm. And it remained so for a long time till, till we had 
those, those uh, times when uh, hippies would come and the border towards Afghanistan was open. I mean, uh, this is a bit uh, of a dukhti rag, which you have, uh, you know, just uh, tried to wake up in me. It's a shut down country. You have no borders. The first tourism international is through your neighborhood. Where are my neighbors? Dubai, who doesn't shake hand with me, who doesn't speak my language, and yet we all rush to Dubai, we go to Baku, we go to Turkey, and it's a one-way street. I mean, have we questioned? We are going there. There are brotherly countries. They are nice to us. We are nice to them. But, but they don't come this way. So somebody has to analyze why. And we have to be honest with ourselves. It's not only security, although, of course, in the image of the people out there, it may be one of the concerns. But yes, people still come uh, to Pakistan internationally, Europe, America. Everywhere. But they are in very few number, and they don't come exactly for tourism. They are coming for some conference, for some relatives, or some, some odd business brings them. And then they come to Wall City, and then they come to uh, our historic places. They are, I wish we can draw in people who come just directly to Lahore to see the historicity and our tourism, whatever we have done. That, that's still a far cry, and there are many reasons for that. There are bigger reasons, and uh, why, why don't people do that? It's because we are an anachronistic, out of tune with the world's culture and mood. There's something which is amiss. It's not infrastructure, it's not security, it's, all these may be reasons. It's not cleanliness. You go to Nepal, you go to Sri Lanka, they're less developed. And you see tourism, Thailand, here and there. It's the massage, the temperament, the attitude, the openness, the freedom, and not the barriers which somebody just spoke about. Here, even coming from, I was coming from Kaid Azam University last night to go to your, um, this Sadpur, jo kabhi humne usko banaya tha, apne haathon se, aaj uska bhi jo haal ho raha hai. To, and I found barriers. I couldn't approach, pehle Chinese embassy ke samne, wo sadak band ho chuki hai. Then you coming from university, wah, uh, containers lage mein. Then you come here, there another bear. And then people check you, then people, I mean, you're coming to a damn dinner within uh, So it's a country of NOCs and barriers. And first of all, it's a barricaded mind. Unless we deal with that, I don't see international tourism flourishing. <laughs> Being affiliated with, with, with the hospitality industry for the last three decades or so, I've seen it evolve. Um, nothing against uh, what Lashari Sabe said. I've seen it grow tremendously, tremendous faults, with having no roads whatsoever. And now motorways and expressways going right across Pakistan, right up to GB and Khunjrab Pass. It's a beautiful road. I travel on it. I start off from Hunza in the morning. I'm in Islamabad at home by evening, by nightfall. Lovely accessibility. P uh, people have started, you know, it, it's very encouraging to see such sessions being held by an educational institution. It's very encouraging. So this is what we require. This is what we require, the awareness at, at root le grassroot level. Absolutely right. Perform responsible tourism. Be responsible for what you do, wh how you behave. As a tourist, when you go to these destinations, when you go to these remote areas, do not destroy their the cult culture, do not destroy their environment. Do not, I mean, th these are the basic things that we, that we, and it is very heartening to see this session happening with Beacon House and absolutely very positive, mm -hmm. uh, very, very encouraging. So many, uh, uh, Tourist destinations have come up, Kumrat Valley, Khunjrab was never accessible 
Um, Gwadar was never accessible. Makran Coastal Highway is a beautiful place, absolutely amazing. The domestic tourism has churned so many folds. I mean, it is amazing. Yes, it is not as perfect as anywhere else in the world. Yes, we are in Pakistan. We are an underdeveloped country. We are a third world country, yes. But we are getting there. I'm very optimistic about it. Uh, if this potential had not been there, why would so many hotel and, and hospitality companies be interested in Pakistan? We have more than 155 mountain peaks in Pakistan, across. I've been to Nangapur with base camp eight times. It's lovely, it's beautiful. I've seen so many foreigners there, French, Germans, Americans. They just sit there, enjoy the views. Absolutely amazing. Now that has, now COVID churned our domestic tourism and now domestic people, domestic tourism, and specifically millennials. And this is where Asma's app, you know, it's very, so millennials are the, are the most frequent app users. Uh, old, oldies like us, we, we hardly ever use <laughs> apps, you know. But millennials. <laughs> I'm with you, Charles. <laughs> but it's lovely, it's the integration of technology with the upcoming tourism potential, I, I think it's very, very encouraging and, and we'll see some very decent results in the coming years. So, thank you. So while we talk about educating uh, the tourist, we spoke about educating the investor. Uh, there's another important impact that any expansion in tourism and hospitality has, and that is to the environment. So, what are some of the uh, sustainable practices or suggestions for including sustainable practices within the hospitality sector? Okay. Um, again, one of the um, problems with um, uncoordinated and unregulated tourism development is um, that the unseemly side of hotels gets neglected. Um, you go into a hotel lobby, all very pretty, marble, flashy lights, staff in nice uniforms, lovely. The back of house is a different thing altogether. It's boilers and it's sewage maintenance systems and it's all the horrid things that we don't want to know about. But it's <laughs> as important to the whole community, to the whole environment, getting that right as it is getting the front of house right. And I'm afraid that too often these developments are not taking care of the back of house issues. So sewage is just being pumped into the nearest river. Um, waste collection is, just being th in many cases, it's just been thrown over the side of a, um, a hill or a cliff or in a gully. It's not being collected in a, in a proper, organized manner. Now, there are some parts of Pakistan where initiatives are being taken to develop and manage and organize waste collection in a proper, constructive um, way. And, and this involves AI, it involves robotics particularly. Um, there's a company in uh, Lahore yeah. that is um, doing fantastic progress on this, which involves smart bins, which send a signal back to base saying, hey, I'm getting full, I need to be emptied, and a smart machine signals a pickup truck to go and collect it, and that collection comes back and robots sort the waste and what's left over is incinerated, but it's all enclosed and captured, and that is used for fuel, and so the whole process is recycled. Now, sadly, this is in its infancy, but it's, the technology is there, entrepreneurial efforts are being made to develop it. The thing is, you know, it's, Lahore is a big city and there's a lot of resource there. If we look at the mountains, um, getting trucks to go up to mountains to empty trash cans and litter is a, a problem. And that's where education comes in um, to everybody. Signage, local communities getting very, very engaged with not messing up the environment. Mm. And, um, you know, there's a thing in, you go around Karimabad um, and you'll see lots of litter bins. Fantastic. You know, and it says in English, 
use me or put the letter in here, um, whereas a lot of the tourists are uh, domestic and perhaps it should be in Urdu as well. But that, that aside, there is far less organized collection process for these bins. And um, so I, I think, you know, there's a general understanding of the need to respect and care for our environment. But um, th there's a long way to go to catch up to make it happen practically. Fair enough. But there are some interesting examples. One that you spoke about. Another one was of the concept loop. Uh, that they're uh, working with um, single-use plastic, converting that into pavers, which are then being used in construction. And likewise, this company that you mentioned in Lahore is also looking at um, using Tetra Pak, uh, discarded Tetra Pak packages to, con to create, um, I think, um, recycled wood. Uh, pre, uh, wood, which, yeah. which can then be used for uh, building purposes. So some really interesting work happening on the local front, which needs to perhaps be ampl amplified and spoken more about and promoted uh, in order to reduce the carbon footprint of, uh, um, you know, uh, building and construction and expansion. Uh, so I think uh, it's been a very interesting session with lots of um, um, thought uh, generated regarding the changing millennials, changing domestic tour tourist, which is now making its way to northern areas and to our cultural uh, sites, um, looking at uh, the international tourist, but also catering to the younger population who wants to create a more autonomous tourist um, um, experience for themselves rather than going the uh, more structured route. Um, yes? Can I just add a point? We've, we keep talking about the northern areas yes. and the mountains and so on. But one of the wonders of Pakistan is there's so much else. And, and you know, you've got deserts, desert regions. Fantastic. We have the most fantastic coastline. Hundreds of kilometers of unspoiled beach and ocean frontage yes. and we've got an opportunity to because it's going to get developed one way or the other but we've got an opportunity now to get it right and manage the development of that coastal strip and um, so I, I urge I hope I beg I pray whoever can listen and accept it let's let's do it well let's do it right let's manage the process because we can we have the capability we just need the will. And in that endeavor, we need to keep track of the local space, um, the cost uh, to the ecosystem, and uh, to the community, which is as much a stakeholder as the tourist. Um, we'll now open the um, uh, discussion uh, the, uh, to the questions. We'll open the floor to the questions. So um, what is the role of AI in educating people about ethics of tourism? Or is there a role of AI in educating people about the ethics of tourism? Well, I, I think um, ethics as a general subject isn't just an issue relating to tourism in Pakistan. There's a whole the sort of whole issue of work ethics. Um, I think is something that needs addressing on a fairly major scale. Yeah, and um, I don't think we need to speak. Uh, so much about the role of AI, but perhaps even uh, platforms like yours, which has an educational aspect to it, which speaks about educating people in terms of what ethical tourism is all about. Perhaps you can speak a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I think for us, uh, it won't, it, uh, the way we're approaching it is not so much as in like, uh, oh, you know, um, keep things clean and all that, because I feel that um, the, uh, like we noticed that even uh, now, now at the Wall City, we, I was so excited to see the, all the bins in, in different colors and so on, was in the Vizier Khan Chowk. Uh, is that, that's right, right? So, so it's, I, I feel that all these beautiful tourist sites now are so aware, and, or maybe it was just Wall City. <laughs> So maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, but frankly, like so, I think rather than lecturing um, 
you know, the, the users, you know, keep things clean and all that. Because we've been doing that for years with our campaign, Soft Destinations. Right. Just clean destinations uh, about tree plantations and keeping things clean and blah, 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 all of that. On ground initiatives and uh, virtual initiatives and so on. Uh, our aim is to, uh, what, we, what we are doing is through storytelling and uh, preserving um, sort of... Uh, local traditions, having um, local communities tell their stories, okay. tell the way they used to live so that people understand how, um, uh, you know, why it's, if you love something and you feel that it's your part of you, you will automatically start loving so it, yes. you know? So sensitizing them to how the communities live and that in itself will bring them up to date or make yeah, them think about the ethics. No, and also make them feel, because the problem here is that uh, a lot of, uh, I, I feel that a lot of Pakistani, I mean, I, I, I am a Pakistani and a proud Pakistani, but because I've grown up as an expat, I feel that um, when I moved here, I felt that a lot of people didn't associate, un unless it was like an Islamic sort of a, a mosque or something. I mean, you know, a lot of people didn't associate it as their particular culture or, or that it's their heritage or their, you know, it didn't belong to them. It was just something that, um, um, okay, it exists, you know, or, uh, but e even for our own things, like they, they don't realize that, okay, having like um, the fort, like 20 minutes from your home, is, you know, it's, it's a world heritage site, you know? So uh, I guess for, for us, educating about that, them taking ownership and, and pride in something like that, you know? That will in itself um, kind of lead to people... Um, Having a more ethical relationship with... Yes, and, and just, just feel that, that feeling of ownership will automatically lead to ethical sort of decision and, and you know, whether it's cleanliness, whether it's uh, um, just making sure that there's no graffitis right. or, uh, you know. Uh, right. So preservation of cultural tourist sites in Lahore is a wonderful initiative. Are there any plans for such initiatives in other cities too? Gee, definitely. And it's today that I saw this uh, running on the television that government has uh, upgraded my organization called Wall City Lahore Authority at the Punjab level. So um, we are already now from Lahore Fort and Wall City moved to the Jahangir complex as well as uh, the Shalimar. So now if you ever happen to go to these places, you will find some pleasant change. And uh, then to the other cities uh, like Multan, there's a huge project uh, now on the annual that is uh, where we have the two big shrines. Uh, there, there's a huge park. Zakruddin, Baha Zakruddin. Us jaga par, a huge park, that's all being redesigned, landscaped, and uh, very ambitiously being done. So we are launching on that. We are already working, uh, Wall City, at uh, the fort of Muzaffarabad. There's a red fort in Muzaffarabad. I just would if I'm not digressing, need to talk to these young ones sitting here, you know. Uh, how many of them are really interested in their places and uh, their region and the history? If I ask, uh, raise your hands, how many of you visited Lahore Fort? I think uh, I need to be more positive in life. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm very happy, uh, surprised. Um, I, I believe think this, this validates this, my, my, my <laughs> Yes, <point>. absolutely, <laughs> and mine too, because I'm a absolutely. teacher and I believe that this new upcoming generation absolutely. really wants to absolutely. explore. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, but, uh, did how, you? how many people have visited Darawa for? Yeah. And Ranikot? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. these yeah. other fantastic So treasures. I'm coming to that that please develop a habit to explore. Yes. And uh, I've even seen in my own children when they were growing up, up to bade ho gaye, achha, we want to go where? Mari. So, the, <laughs> aur udar bhi kya, wo, uh, jo PC hotel hai, Burban. So, the, the concept of tourism among our youth 
to just go to Murray or Bourbon, that, that we have to, you know, cross over and uh, explore our district. Although I've been in the district administration all my life, I wish I have time and uh, opportunity to travel each and every district of Pakistan. Uh, because now I've under started understanding the value of culture. The, I've explored history of Punjab and other regions and never travel to a place without first reading about it. Read um, very deeply about it, then talk to the people where you, wherever you go. It's so much fun to see the dialect, the, the uh, style of people. Mm, and I, I've been here uh, and as chairman CDA, I would love Potawari is coming to me. Oh, Kamaranji ke aalne dusane. Acha, ab ye ye jo zaban hai, badi mazedar hai. Oh, dusan ke banso ke itna kam karne rehne ho. Acha, so so. Maine kaha bhi, wo main ye banna. Na do shama ne jadiya dusi banso. The yakin karo dusan tarki paso. Main kya jo ke. Ek bano dusan ITO. Since this guy was a Raja from, uh, you know, Andrun, he was a big ITO. Okay, or you can go to the Fauge for the Fauge. So, the Fauge for the Fauge, then the captain, then the colonel, then the general, then you can't get your mouth full of martial law. So, you see, now you see, now you go to Lahore, now you have left me the other side, I'm all right. Okay, now I'm in Sindh, I'm in Sindh. Sindhis, you know, their dialect and their style is so beautiful. Sai, akhush ahyo, mataro, jod, dhor, dhangar, aada, paada, sab khaira. Now they're so humble, they're so sweet, they're so melodious. Punjab, I'm out, okay, all is what, huh, here you go. So, here, here, they're ready to, oh, my, my, ایک نان فروش تھا اس محلے میں جہاں ہم رہتے تھے مزانگ میں اس نے بڑا پیسہ اور کامیابی دیکھی تو اس نے اپنے بچوں کے نام رکھ دیئے اس شو میں آکے کہ لوریا شو جب تک نہ مارے اکڑ نہ دکھائے چلتا بھی ایسا ہی ہے تو دیکھتا بھی ایسے ہے اچھا وہ اس نے نام رکھ دیئے ایک کا نام چار بیٹے تھا جی اس کے اجازت ہے ویسے ہاں جی بیٹے ایک کا نام بادشاہ آزم ایک کا نام وزیر آزم ایک کا نام مغل آزم اور ایک سکندر آزم یہ ایکچول نام تھے وہ اس سے ہم پوچھتے تھے کیا آلے پا جی ٹھیک ہو کیا آل جے تو اڑے ہو وزیر آزم دا وہ ٹھیک ہے جی ان کیم ہے گیا وہ چلا گیا دبائی وہ تھے ٹیکسی چلان دیا اپنا سیٹ ہو گیا ٹھیک اچھا اب ایک دن میں اس ڈیپٹی کمیشنر لاہور بیٹھا ہوں دفتر میں تو ایک بزر ہوتا ہے ٹیلی فون میں تو آپریٹر کہتا ہے سر تو اڑے نال وہ تاج نان ف میں نے کہا یار ابھی میں دس بارہ لوگ بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں تو میں خود کال بیک کروں گا وہ پھر بزر آیا کہتا ہے نہیں نہیں سر وہ کہتا ہے امرجنسی آپ مجھ سے بات کریں میں نے کہا اچھا جی کرو اور میں کہا کی ہو گیا تاج صاحب کیڑی امرجنسی ہو گئی اور جناب وزیر آزم پھڑیا گیا جے یہ ٹیلی فون ویسے ہم سب کو ایک نہیں اس سے زیادہ دفعہ آ چکا ہے خیر تو میں نے کہا ہاں میں نے کہا وہ پھر پھڑیا گیا ہے کہ اندر نہیں قسم رابدی عید کی انہیں کچھ نہیں کیتا میں کہا ارواری تو این جی کہنا ہے وہ باز نہیں آندھا کی ہویا ہے کہ انہیں گلتے سڑھوں جناب وزیر آزم تے بادشاہ آزم تو ہمیں گیا جائے اتھے داتا صاحب چنگی پلی دعا منگی نے پتہ نہیں خرے کی ہویا اتھو آرے نے لور چوکی دے کول تو پلس نے کیر لیا انہوں نے کہا ہوئے شناخت کراؤ انہیں کہا جناب میں وزیر آزم انہیں رکھ کے رپٹ مار انہیں پھر دوجہ نے پوچھا ہے تو دس ہے انہیں کہا جی یہ وزیر آزم ہے تو میں بادشاہ آزم ہے وہ دونہ نو جناب بڑا مار دے پہ جائے تھے جناب ڈسٹرکٹ میجسٹریٹ نے تصدیق کرو کہ گل بالکل صحیح ہے اچھا میں نے کہا کہ بھائی میرا خیال ہے we let the thing go on تو anyway thank you تو میں نے کہا بھائی اب اس کو بھیجو بادشاہ آزم کو سکندر آزم کہتا ہے جی وہ رکشے میں بیٹھ کے نکل گیا میں نے کہا اور وہ جو مغلِ آزم کہتا ہے جی وہ منجے تھلے بار گیا اچھا میں نے کہا پھر ان میں کی کرنا کہ اندر میری سلطنت ہی لٹی گئی ہے تو دوسری کے اندر میں کی کرنا so this is how people are what I mean to say is people are beautiful places are beautiful 
It's just that you need to explore them from that angle and not just end up with bourbon and have your barbecue and come back. That's not really tourism. So, so explore it in the right way. What a beautiful way to end the discussion today. Um, power to the people and getting to know your people and your roots, experiencing culture and the beauty of Pakistan by interacting with its people. That's the message we uh, take home today with us. Thank you so much to the esteemed panel, uh, our audience.